Casey. It's Shane. There's a warp storm of brewing, son. Oh no, war on the psychers. Everyone hide. Like I, I can't, I can't tell if I'm lost in the warp or if you're lost in the warp. But your boy is coming to you from the future and the past. Because yesterday I recorded an episode. Let's do the and, time warp again. And today I'm recording an episode. So my bits box is going to be thin. It's but, just a jump to the left. Yeah. That's, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't and know. And then the a step to the right. Is that, is that a uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show? That is Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. Yes. Okay. Put your hands on your hips. <laughs> We're making waves. It's, oh, I'm gonna. We're gonna get sued. <laughs> we're sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We're unprofessional here. So I'm getting married next week. Yeah, or this week, as you listen this to this, weekend, it'll yeah. be like it'll be like two days from the time this comes out. We're recording Thursday, May sixteenth. That's right. He will and, be married on the nineteenth. And so what had happened was, is yesterday we were supposed to record, and you, you were off. You were far afield. You were like Big E, and you were attempting to unify the tribes and to bring the rabble into the warm bosom of the allegedly peaceful Imperium. And, and truthfully, no one knew exactly what I was keeping behind closed doors. Nobody knew. Uh, but we knew that something had to happen. Something. Because between the two of us, you guys could have missed two weeks of episodes and then you'll have left us. That would have been the end of us entirely. But nay, next week, you have to look forward a special episode uh, that's just me and the homie Austin talking about some really neat topics. But today, it's the OGs, and I'm confused because it feels like it's been a while since we talked, except to you guys, there's been no break. Bleep year, maybe? That's it. It's just a warp storm, a brewing yeah. out in the galaxy. Warp will do some crazy stuff to you. Out in the galaxy that I intend to burn with my new Chaos Space Marine Codex. Oh, I've already got it on order. Oh, I boy. can't wait. We're going to talk a little bit about it. I've got my favorites. Casey's got his thoughts. He's been <laughs> drooling at the mouth, chomping at the bit, just to get this well, you got out. You, Xeno scum, got a Codex before I did. Your time is over, Astartes. My time begins. Filthy... Humey. Uh, let's open up that bits box. <coughs> the bits box, of course, you know, is where we talk about what we've done in the hobby this week. And uh, I blew mine yesterday slash next week for the listeners. And so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to speak predictably, predictively rather, and uh, think up stuff I'm going to do. That's what my bits box is going to be. But you go ahead and start while I concoct some something so this week in my bits box it's been kind of crazy i've been crazy busy doing the dad stuff doing the model stuff doing commissions all over the place i finished up a land raider i finished up an eradicator team for primaris so those will be those have been posted you guys should be able to see those on our instagram on our socials on our x as they call it nowadays shane's raising his hand so i will forward it to him I would like to remind everybody that your boy does also paint. Go ahead. Commission painter extraordinaire. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're begging for another paint challenge, sir. You are. I don't. I, Let's go. I'm two and one. I, I don't. I don't want to paint you I'm in a challenge. One, right? I want to paint for money. What was it? Two and one. Yeah. Two, even, two and one. Was it two and one? Two and yeah, one. Two and one. So anyways. In the last week, I have painted up my new Def Dread. He is looking pretty tasty. I'm going to try to get him finished tomorrow. And a new mech that I kitbashed from an old Assault on Black Reach kit and the Mega Knob kit from the uh, Mega Knobs. So, yeah, he looks pretty spicy when he's done. Look for him on our X. Look for him on our Instagram. They will look awesome. Also, Shane has been painting tons of Judge Dread. Shane. Anything from your Judge Dread box? So much Judge Dread. Um, Thank you, Shane. And we'll go back to my 40k stuff now. <laughs> okay, so my 40k stuff's been pretty, pretty great. I also have a secret project that I'm working on. I'm excited. I am stoked because I've always wanted one of these models, and I finally got one. 
and I'm getting it from a friend here in town, and I've almost got it done. Shane doesn't know about it, but as soon as we can, we'll play a game with it. We'll tell you the guys the results, post lots of pictures about it. It's going to be carnage. When are you going to paint your stampa? I want to play. Hey, he's better ready. I'm just saying. And your stampa. He is primed red. He is, and I hate that red. I it's, really do. It's, I here, really Here's hate the it. thing, folks. It's bad. You you need to post it. You it's need like, to post it. It's bad. It's not I red. I posted it. It's not red like a red that you would want. It's like it's Auburn. It's like rust. Yeah. Except not like a rust effect or anything desirable. Okay, I got it's, it for free. It, you did get it for I free. got it for free. And it free was, is a good price. Which is awesome. Especially for a model that's like, what, 150 bucks? Well, you can get it in that new Orc box and it just kind of comes with. True. That new mech. Ooh, I want that new mech. He looks so good. But yes, the Stompa is an amazing model. It is uh, a little busted up, but... It's an orc model. Who cares? So I just got to hit it with some can of air, dust off all the cobwebs, check out our pictures on that. I'll probably repost them on the Twitter here soon because, man, it was covered in cobwebs. Uh, rusty auburn brown, would you say, is the color outdoor house primer. It looks like a brick. It does. It's that red. That's yeah. the exact kind of red. It's awful. And it needs to be yellow. Because I love Bad Moons. You got a long way to go f- to yellow from that. Oh, gosh, it's that's why I haven't started, to better, be honest. Better bust out uh, you know, Go-Go Gadget Wraithbone. Oh, gosh, it's going to be terrible. If only they made a good, solid yellow primer. A uh, good one. I bet Rust-Oleum has it, but it may, uh, it may make it look like uh, the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. Exactly. So, that is what's been going on in the hobby. I will prime our Space Marine board game minis sooner rather than later. And I am almost finished with my Orc, Black Orc, Blood Bowl team. Like six to ten models done, I think. I am so ready for you on the Blood Bowl tip. You don't even know how to play. Man, I'm ooh, ooh, our elves, ooh. Ooh, those Elven Union. Ooh. Yeah, somebody in our local community has reached out to me and asked us if we would love to play Blood Bowl. Actually, they are doing a, they're starting up a league here in our hometown at our local hobby shop that I love to go to, the Foundry, and they are getting together on Saturdays to play, so maybe we'll get into that. Yeah, might do. Uh, For me, in this coming week, my intent is to do a couple of uh, judges for Judge Dredd, which involves, involves me getting the inks out. So what I've been doing on these, this is a good bits box segment. You do love ink. Man, I am really enjoying the inks. You know what? Guys, get in the comments and let me know. Mostly because of that sweet airbrush. That's you right. Have. Yeah, I mean the inks and the airbrush are the are the move. Uh, Where'd you get that airbrush, Shane? Well, I got that airbrush from somebody at the store, but then I got that compressor from you. I've just stolen it. I just looted. I deboed his compressor. You remember when we used to say that? Was it Tebo? Did you Debo. say Debo? Debo. You don't. You're too young to remember that. I guess I am too young. I, I'm an old man, but. Uh, yeah, a little, little painting tip for you guys is you get your inks. They've got them at the Hobby Lobby and they're calligraphy inks. That's all they are. You look for acrylic based ink and what it is, is like, if you get the blue, it's the same blue that's in like a blue pen. All right. And you, you don't even so much Zenithal you can, but what you really want to do is undercoat with the airbrush black to white. All right. And then when you spray these inks on, what will happen? You spray them on real light. They will color the white. They will not color the black. And it's just perfect blends in a bottle. It's a quick and dirty way to make it look a little bit more detailed. Oh my gosh, it's not even the detail. It's just like these Judge Red dudes are in like these dark blue, you know, jumpers, right? And they've got all their trim. Rompers, and whatnot. one would yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like Morph a, suits. It's like a leotard. And uh, da, 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 da. You know, what you do is you prime them black, but then you take the white and you do, you know, go go all the way up to full white on like their thighs and their butts and the tops of their shoulders, right? And then you hit them with the blue, and then it's as if you just went and blended your ass off to get this black to blue effect. 
and it's per it ends up perfectly smooth and it's super easy to do and it just looks so quality and, and so I've got to do that on a number of models and that's what I intend to do shmoney. this week. It's going to be shmoney, son. So Shane, I've got one question for you. Yes, sir. We have a doubles tournament in our local community coming up. Are you going to be in it? Oh, I have no idea. It depends on when it is and whatnot. It is on the 25th of May. The idea is two people team up, tag team against two other people. Both, all four, have a thousand points army. And then two allies fight two allies. Simple. So, so I did this once with the homie Austin. He brought a thousand. Really? Points. Yeah, he brought a thousand points of his guard, and I brought a thousand points of my Chaos Space Marines, and uh, we did pretty good until we ran up against some uh, Wraith Knights and other and other Imperial Knights. And oh no! It's the Eldar cheese. Yes, yes. It was a thousand points of Knight cheese and a thousand points of Eldar cheese, and we uh, came to a came to a uh, depressing end rapidly but it was the xenos are coming for you the the uh the thousand point doubles game is a fun game because what you do i think i mean this is the way that most people seem to do it is one guy brings like troops and action dudes right and the, action the other monkeys yeah and the other guy brings the tanks and the the heavy artillery and the big chunk big chunky stuff you know and uh it's good you're each bringing like half the army yeah, that's it. And you know, you want to like, you want to leverage whatever the army is good at. Like, I can't wait. I mean, I've got cast space rings. I guess I could do both because I got. I personally don't have enough tanks, but if someone had plenty of tanks for chaos space rings, they could do either. But then the legionnaires are really good. However, you've got boys, and they're pretty good these days as Ooh, well. Yeah, bully boys, stompy boys, cult of speed boys, every kind of boy. Which way? Green Tide Boys. It's like somebody brought in the milkshakes because the boys are out in the yard. All the boys to the yard. Yeah. That's probably all I've got in my bits box. As I said, uh, next week you'll get my actual bits box of this week or this last week. And, uh, you know, the warp storm continues. So we'll see you uh, in the bits after the bits box open or closed, I guess. <laughs> Shane. Casey. What? Are we talking about today? Oh boy, we're going to talk about the new on pre-order as we record this oh. Chaos Space Marine oh. Codex. The Chaos Space Marine Codex. Oh boy, oh boy. I've got so many detachments. I say I. Because me. They made it for me. Moi. Yeah, I mean, you, you pre-ordered it, like, instantly. I'm, I'm getting my Miss Piggy on. They made a codex just for moi. I heard about it, and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to get a text in, like, five seconds. And uh, they didn't give me four detachments. They didn't give me six. They didn't do, like, Tau and give Gosh, me, what, they, si six, how many? six and one's crute. They didn't yeah, do that's that. Right, yeah. They didn't do that. They put eight in there. Eight detachments, folks. That eight is of eight different flavors of space marines, chaos space marines. And then they said, um, the uh, the Emperor's children, not in here. Yeah, that was... We're going to index them separately. Man, I have thoughts on that. So at, at, at some point, we're going to get just free rules to download from Warcom for, for them. So call it nine... Death Guard, of course, is its own thing, which, you know, they're indexed. I mean, I guess I guess Death Guard end up with a book at some point, but it'll be one of those supplement books like the Dark Angels. You know, it'll be it'll be three. Such a shame. Yeah, it'll I was going to say it'll probably be a thin book. A lot of people were really excited because this is what they did with the world eaters. They said, let's have some world eaters taken out of the book and then we'll come back with Angron, come back with a codex, come back with new models. And then they did kind of the same thing here. But then when everybody got excited. They were like, nope, sorry. It's just going to be a little supplement. No new models, no new information, just a little tiny thin book. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because, I mean, I don't... Well, I, well it's, a hard, it's a hard faction to focus on without, you know, going to the depths of depravity and causing censorship and things. So I, I kind of get it, you know, in the day and age we're in. Well, what I don't get, and I came into the hobby at a point that uh, Thousand Sons, Death Guard, 
and then were leaders had all gotten broken off into their own things, right? Yeah. And those were thin books. And I kind of I kind of don't know, especially with world leaders, if is there enough variance of detachment type thematically in the world leaders to make a book worth? Because I don't feel like there was necessarily enough to make dark angels. Especially the way they did the dark angels where you're not really required to take any dark angels if to use your dark angels rules. Like you, it kind of feels like that a lot of those detachments that came out in the recent 10th edition dark angels book should have had some requirements to like, Hey, uh, it's really focusing on the primarchs really is if you ask me, you know, if you get a primarch, you're getting a codex. Yeah. But that seems crazy because the primarch is ultimately one data card. And then still lead your army. Yeah, I, I get, I get it. You know, I, uh, but with that, we have the catastrophe of the emperor's children, Fulgrim model that people were very heated about. You tell, tell me the story, because I don't know. Beautiful Fulgrim demon, demon Primarch model comes out, gets revealed, images are shown, people are excited, and then, boom, Horus Heresy. Yeah. So was he even a? I I don't I don't know. Have we done? We have not done Fulgrim. Have We've we? Not done Fulgrim. We need to. We need to do Fulgrim because he was a demon Primarch during the Heresy. Uh, towards the back half, yeah. Like, I mean, the Heresy is just really crazy. Si- Siege of Terror, the game, isn't it? Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they we, give you different like mission packs for different like battles and stuff. But who doesn't want to play Siege of Terror? I suppose I suppose the people that are playing Horus Heresy, that is the case. My point, though, is, I mean, I don't know, was Fulgrim even at the Siege of Terror? But he, he was. Yeah, because you've got Angron pre-demonization in Horus Heresy. Like, they, there's a Horus Heresy Angron. There are multiple models of different Primarchs. Right. Demon and Undemon. Well, so my question is, like, if you're playing Horus Heresy, do you use, like, current big demon 40k You can Angron? use both Fulgrims, apparently. Oh, so you can use both Fulgrims or both Angrons? Yep, normal so, Fulgrim or Demon Fulgrim. Okay, so they've got it set up where you can have the heresy battles happening all the way up to the the felling of Sanguinius. Basically, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, they need to probably do some more Demon stuff, but... They probably need to go ahead and make Sanguinius so he can fight oh, they uh, do. Horus in the, they in, have. The, in the throne room. Horus, I think, has three, two, I want to say two... Get back to me on that. I've never seen. We're 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 making a lap. We're making a lap. It's we're good. making a lap. We got forty five minutes to fill, guys. You come here to hear us talk. We're gonna talk. Uh, and it's all forty k. I have well, no, it's thirty k right now. I've not seen a game of horse heresy being played. I have. I've never witnessed it. Um, I just don't want to learn new rules. I've uh, got to learn old, old world before too long and the, a new version of Age of Sigmar. I'm with you. Yeah. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit about that sort of thing. So be on the lookout for that pod coming soon. Also, get in the comments and tell me, have you ever witnessed anyone play Horus Heresy in person? Was it painted? Was, and, here, and here's another thing. Was it more than just one of those starter boxes? Because that's another thing that I see sometimes with a few of these, um, let's call it less popular games, <laughs> is maybe if you see it, it's just like, I, I got a starter box and nothing else. And it's like, are you really in it if that's what you're doing? Fair. I mean, sure you are, but you know, who, am I, who am I to judge who's in what? But the Heresy's, the, the Horus Heresy is a funny game. It's funny. It's got a lot of... Uh resin kits that i cannot believe are still kicking around that uh but yeah if if it got i don't know just a little bit more something i might dive into it if i could it needs a little something but i i can't i can't say what something i I, yeah it needs the sauce 
A little sauce. To tell sauce. you what, though, there's sauce in this Chaos Space Marine Codex. Oh, boy, is there ever. Stuff has been revealed. Uh, I got a lot of my information from the uh, Tabletop Tactics uh, on-demand subscription that I do. We'll put their link in the comments because I highly recommend those guys. They have a lot of fun playing the game. And that is always the ethos of this podcast is we're going to have fun. Yeah. We, I am not about to talk about which of these detachments is the most competitive. There is one in here that I don't even have the rules written down because it's not important to me. I have uh, my information from several sources, a couple forums, uh, Goonhammer, and then Play on Tabletop, which is, you know, the everyman's 40K YouTube channel. Yeah, they're the, they're the <laughs> American ones, aren't they? They're the, actually, I think they're Canadian. Oh, do they even count? Who? Can, well, they, can they play? Can they play 40K in Canada? Well, Canadian is just wish.com America, so. We have American at home. <laughs> so we're going to get we're gonna get hate mail for that one. We, we are just soaring in our ignorance. Goodness. And myopicness. My, myopathy? Go ahead, Shane. Go ahead. Shane. Do your thing, sir. I have a top three list. He does. He loves a list. I love a list. You guys know I love a list. It's the top, it's my it's my personal top three favorite detachments that I'm most excited to mess with when the book comes out. And hey, this is going to save us time in the long run. So we get all the details about what Shane likes and what you potentially like in detail. I'm going to get started on the list. My number three. Oh, oh I have an OLI. Bonus fry alert. I have an outside looking in. It did not quite make my list. What you got? It can't be a top four list because lists only come in three, fives, and tens. Everyone knows that. That's the rules. And bad luck comes in threes. I don't know what that has to do, but I believe you. Uh, <laughs> my, my outside looking in is what I will imagine will be seen by the community as the much maligned, the, the unnecessary, the superfluous detachment in the new cast space ring codex. And that is the cultist one. Ooh, I don't, I don't it, even know what it's called. Yeah. But it, all its enhancements, all of its, uh, little gubbins are all around, uh, the keyword damned units. Chaos cult. Yeah. The ca- is that what they call it? Yeah. It's just called it's, chaos. Cult. It's the chaos cult guys. Yeah. And, it's oops all cultists oops all cultists now it doesn't have to be all cultists but all of the leverage of the detachment is going to be for cultists um and and this is going to include the uh traitor guardsmen and the felgor beastmen and the regular old cultist mob and things of that nature uh the dark commune is the one care well was the one character they've got now some dude with a flamer that is going to be a attachable uh, leader character to the cultist. You know, you've got a curse cultist, but that's it. Now, do you know how many damn cultists you would need? They're 50 points for 10 as we sit here today. There's no way. They're cheap. Yeah, they're, and, and they're, a, they're a monopose kit, so you get those 10 bodies and they're going to look like you just ran them off the, the, the cloning tool, right? Uh, I think they're just pistols and swords now. And they've ju- they're just pistols and swords. You don't even bother with their little grenade launcher that, honestly, yeah. unless you were just trying to make a bad time for yourself, you weren't even bothering with. It hit on fives or something ridiculous. Let's be honest. You were using cultists to stay on your backfield objective anyways. That's all they're for. But and here- that's what you did all the time. I mean, I hated you for that. That's right. <laughs> but here's the thing about them and the detachment. I don't have any interest in playing... A two thousand point cult chaos cultist detachment list. It's a cheap army to build, I guess. Except, well, no, because you're going to need you know ten boxes of cultists or whatever. I think you, I think maybe you can run them in unit of twenty. eBay. So I guess you could do one hundred and twenty cultists. It, like, eBay. oh god, get out of here! <laughs> it'd be it'd be absurd. Troll trader. Anyhow, uh, if somebody want to play a five hundred point game. Boy, I'm going to take out a couple units of uh, what I'll do is I'll go get my veteran guardsman kill team and I'm going to say these are traitor guardsmen. I'm going to get my unit of 10 cultists. I'm going to attach the dark commune. Maybe I get another bunch of cultists, right? Maybe I run Judge Dread citizenry and call them 10 cultists and then use that attached like a couple space marines in a tank 
right? And it's like, there, 500 point cultist list. Let's go. Boom. How fun, right? So even the ones that are not interesting, where this is different than the, the other, let's call it redhead stepchild detachment of recent release, the all oops, all crude Tau detachment that the Tau people are very upset about because they honestly didn't get enough deta- detachments. They're so jealous. The homie Dallas is so all jealous five of, of them your boy. Can take a leap. Oh, I tell you, the Tau people get out of here. But anyhow, including my nephew. The the thing with the crude <laughs> is the Tau people that don't like the crude don't have the crude, so they're never doing that. But all the Chaos Space Marine players have got some cultists, so. Why not try it? It's going to be fun. That is my outside looking in. But now... Number three. Number three. But before that, I got to say, the army rule is still the same. We're still making dark packs. Yep. They also made a change to it. So, check this out, Casey. Because you've, you've seen me do these dark packs for many, many months now. Yeah, and you roll fives and sixes like it's going out of style. Yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot of damage to myself with them. Uh, you still do that. However... Rules as written, you roll, the, you roll the leadership test before you do your shooting or fighting, or after you do your shooting or fighting. Okay. And then you see what happens to you. However, Ooh. things like Abaddon have got, if you take a dark pack and packed and pass it, then you roll a die to see if you got a, a command point and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. There are some abilities on things that trigger if you pass the leadership test for your dark pack, except... Like, if you just did it the way that it's written, you won't have taken your dark pack yet. So it's like, oh, this guy, I need to do it beforehand. So I've always done it beforehand and then just apply the wounds, if any, on the back end, right? So I'll say like, all right, I failed it. So this dude's going to die after he gets done. They flipped it around. They were like, it appears that everyone is doing it this way. So we're just going to have it that way. And then all these interactions that have to do with whether or not you pass a dark pack are going to make more sense. Huh. Thank you, Games Workshop. It's, it's pretty dope. It's like somebody played a few games. <laughs> they actually played tested it for once. So my uh, number three most exciting detachment is the Renegade Raiders. Yes. Now this is a... The Red Corsairs have risen. This is a very controversial... From the Maelstrom. This is a very controversial take from me. Because... The picture here on, on Blackheart for World Ma- War Master. The the uh, the picture on the on the work on article is a guy on one of those damn bikes. <laughs> oh, you suck! But this one excites me. So what it does is it gives everything that is Heretic Astartes assault. For those of you who do not know, Shane hates bikes in 40k. I don't, I don't believe in them. They don't make sense. They seem I mean, silly. They exist. They do. But I refuse to accept your reality. Uh, here's why I like this. Because I like a Chaos Space Marines as world leaders army, right? And I know it's just assaults. All you can do is Ooh. advance and shoot. Yeah. But everybody's going to get to do it. But they do so, have a strat that lets uh, this this detachment actually does have a strat that lets them uh, not only advance and do that but also advance and charge oh well see there we go yeah uh i i just i love taking all stabby boys of legionnaires and everything and running them out as fast as i can to just get up in your face and it's like people don't expect that they think oh the chaos space marines they're gonna be so they're gonna be so disciplined and they're gonna play cagey and da 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 and i'm just running right into the fray and this is a great detachment to do that and you'll be doing it shooting in the whole way yeah, and, uh, and it gives you plus one AP if you're shooting at enemies on an objective. So the ones you're going at anyways are going to be hurt even worse. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, my number two. This one is neat. Here's the thing. I didn't even write down the rules for this one. It's thematically how much I love this one. Which one? The Soul Forge War Pack. This oh. is this is the Vashtor led demon engine yeah. thing, and what they do is you can choose to make a soul forge contract or something. It's called yes, and then stuff happens with the Archifane himself. Oh my god! 
give it to me. Give it right to me. It's you gun- realize you have to get a Vash door now. Well, yeah, I have to get a Vash door. Not only that, I got to get a Corn Lord, Lord, of, Lord of Skulls. Man, that's a good I'm gonna have I'm going to have the Forge Fiend, the Defiler, and the Corn Lord, Lord of Skulls and not have any more deployment zone left. I don't know where these things are going to stand. <laughs> okay? That's my number two. Before we get to number one, you made some observations about changes to some characters, changes to some data sheets. Yes, they did add a few changes to a few things. Um, you, I heard through the grapevine, really, that uh, your bad boy Abaddon is not going to be as great. He lost all four marks of uh, the Chaos Gods. Yeah, so, okay. So the index detachment that has the marks of chaos. Find my notes. That lets you. So what it did is you would assign a mark to a unit. And then if you did a dark pack, you would get, say, instead of lethal or sustain, which is your dark pack thing, that's existing in all these detachments. You can just turn those on at a small risk. Um, you would get them on fives and sixes instead of just sixes, right? Well, Abaddon had all of them. So he would always get lethal or sustained on fives and sixes in shooting or in melee all the time. Didn't matter. And he would reroll ones all the time. Now he only has Mark of Chaos Undivided. So for that detachment uh, that, for for the detachment that still has all the marks, I think it's the uh, Word Bearers one. Yes. He's not as spicy in that not as spicy but for all the rest he's still just a absolute demolisher true and you know you're going to attach him to you're going to attach him to uh terminators and he's going to be able to reroll uh hits anyway. there you go um, so then you got cypher his pistols are now melee weapons i love that so much because it makes sense and to be honest i don't really understand why pistols aren't melee weapons in on more on more he things. refuses to use that sword of his just refuses no yeah. reason yeah no i, I think i think if he were to pull that sword he would reveal something something groundbreaking but he still has that one aura if you're within 12 of him and you try to use a strat on somebody within 12 inches of him it doubles the cost of the cp okay that's actually new before it was not an aura it was just one of those like you use a, a battle strat, tactic it? or wasn't it a- it was an ability that he had it was but it did, it could be anywhere hmm. on the board. But this is like... I'd be thinking ninth. It's got to be right around him, which is interesting. Uh, he does have this thing where if you target a unit that he's standing close to, he just gets to shoot them. Yeah, that's true. He, he's neat. I, I ran him the other day. He was really cool. Uh, I'm quite proud of the paint job that I've got on him, and I look forward to running him even more. Obliterators are now a, uh, have a range on their weapons down to 18 inches from 24. They used to be able to shoot like pretty much across the field. And now you can't. Yeah, and I'm not mad about this. Uh, th- this is a this is more indirect tax because they have that once per battle indirect. But what people would do is, well, there were two things. One, they would they would uh, run them in squads of four instead of two, and then you'd have all this indirect that you could do for from quite far. So you could like melt a people over a wall after you deep struck in. And yep. it's like, okay, guys, come on. And then finally, we've got the Warp Towns, which everyone and their mother is talking about. Um, they are looking pretty spicy in this, in this edition, I've got, I've got to say. Basically, you drop them in on the board, and in your opponent's movement phase, so say you've had a good fight with them in your round, and then it comes back around to your buddies, and now your warp talons are out in the air. They've already demolished that whole unit of infantry. What are they going to do? They're going to get shot to death. So what you do, you use their effect, and they go back into strategic reserves for a turn, and back again on your turn, you just rapid ingress them right on to another turn. It's an uppy downy for the cast space raids. Or they'd be bouncing. Bounce, bounce, bounce. And they smack. Yeah, and I don't, Look, I know you're going to run it. Nearly every single unit that I run of troops has gotten an attached character, and you can't attach you can, anything yeah. to the warp talents. And therefore, yeah. you think the jump pack, Lord, but no, you can't. 
No, I, the the way I understand it is the warp talons are like a little too wild for that. Yeah, and the raptors are the ones that can take the characters, and they're a little more a of a reasons. regimented thing. Yeah, but uh, but uh, on to my number one. Yeah, your number one. Do you want to talk about your detachment? I got one. My this is this is my number one favorite detachment. The one I, I'm most excited about. I have a number one detachment, but let's see. Well, they may be the same. Ooh, that's what I'm saying. Like you go, We're, veterans. I of knew the it. Long. War. How did I know you were going to pick the Black Legion Detachment? Okay. Veterans of the Long War. Here's the thing. Likely the most powerful in the tank-heavy uh, meta that we're in in 10th edition, the most powerful one is going to be the Iron Warriors Detachment, which basically gives a transhuman physiology to everything in your army. Minus one to wound, yeah. Minus one to wound if you have greater toughness than they do. Strength. That, that uh, Right, right. That's going to be the detachment that everyone's going to run. Oops, all tanks. Yeah, I have no interest in this. The Veterans of the Long War is the one for me. Why? Their detachment ability is, is bad guy oath of moment. Yes, that where, is true. Where you, in your command phase, pick out something... And I think it's called Focused Hatred or something like that. Focus of Hatred. Focus of Hatred. You pick your Focus of Hatred, and then you get to reroll wounds on, I mean, hits on that. And then there are enhancements and stratagems that have to do with your Focus of Hatred to, let's say you destroy it, you can pick another one, and it, it has to be like close to a Chaos Lord, so it has to be something close to Avedon, which I love the idea that that was my Focus of Hatred in my shooting phase. We have absolutely destroyed it. And then you spend some CP and Abaddon's like, and you guys are next. And then you charge him into that and eliminate that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They've got, they've got stratagems that do everything, right? It's a total, it's a total like uh, a Swiss army knife of a detachment because there's, there's one in there that lets you fight first. Yeah, there's a fight first. There's a, if something comes to you, you can like run away and thereby extend Six the charge. Six-inch reactive move. Oh man, it's so much stuff that a lot of other sort of, um, well, what, what do you, what would you call it? Like sort of techie armies, right? Like uppy downy type armies or like shoot and scoot type things and all, all these sort of things. It's like you get a little taste of all of that. Yeah. And you get the sort of dependability of I'm a reroll hits on this thing. So, I mean, you know, and I know what I'm shooting at. Okay. That's fine. But man, it's coming and I don't know what you're going to do. It's going to be so fun. Yeah. The wide masses of chaos space Marine players, they're going to be using this attachment folks. Cause not everybody can afford all tanks, but if you can, you're going to run legionaries. You're going to run your Abaddon and some terminators. That's all you really need. Hey, hey, and uh, there is no doubt that all those enhancements are getting put on everything because you know how many characters I'm running at any given time. Stop bragging. Your master of possession lost his feel no pain. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take it because it's going to be so fun. My favorite detachment, and I have got to say, it is so lore accurate, so amazing. I just, ooh, I gushed. I love it. And you probably know what's coming. Deceptors. Oh, yes. This is the Alpha Legion one. Yes. It gives them a bunch of infiltrate, and I think it has a lot of uppy downy. Yeah, kind of. You get three units of both legionaries and cultists. You can give them infiltrate, and that's essentially, gosh, you can, if, you can, if you said earlier you can run like 20 cultists, right, to a unit. 20, 40, 60 cultists on the board holding objectives and then three units of legionaries too already on the board holding points for an early game point lead. You know I love early point leads. No, so, you, you usually need them. Yeah, I do usually need them. Um, you also get an enhancement for an infantry character. It gets, you know, stealth and lone operative, but the best one I love and I love this. Well, there's two actually. There's detonator. If you have a character within 18 inches of a vehicle that dies in the, on the enemy side, you can auto-explode it. I 
Here's the thing. Sabotage. I want there to be a strat. A core strat. I'm, ju- I'm just... The, people are going to get in the comments on me about this. I want another core stratagem. I want, for one CP, when you blow up one of my things with Deadly Demise, I want to pay money for it to just blow up. Man. Nah, right? That'd be great. I don't want to roll for it. Auto I don't want explode. any argument. I just want to blow it up. Orcs need an auto-explode strat. I see. Seriously. Because sometimes... You're just mad at it. You just want to see the world burn. That's it, man. You also have this amazing one, and this is my favorite. You can give your character the the data sheet of another character in your army. That one is super weird. That's Alpha Legion for you, baby. Yeah, I don't even know. I am Alpharius. Yeah, that that one's weird because you have to kill the 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 unit champion or whatever that was running it so it's it's strange but i think that it is going to have shenanigans 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 and i, I love, love shenanigans it. anything um, else shane no but we can speak briefly about the newly revealed uh mission pack yeah so next week uh austin and i discuss this and i get really out there on some theories and things that i would like but uh today we'll talk a little bit about just what is it and it's a new way to play match play. It's a new deck. It's new secondaries. And um, it, it appears to be putting an emphasis on battle line. And there's already a lot of hand-wringing taking place in the various chats that we're part of. A lot of schemes. No, no. A lot of worry because these, these people just love to worry and fuss. Really? Yeah. So. That's why I mute the chats. You got to mute the chats. That, that's a tip, everyone. Mute the chats. Come in when you want. Get out when you feel like. All right? But uh, tip. the community did not seem to appreciate what is often called the uh, troop tax in ninth edition, where you had to have so many, you know, regular old troops. Yep. And people see these because what it is, is you can get an extra victory point if the thing holding the objective is a battle line unit, for instance. And so they're like, oh, well, now we're going to have to have all this battle line. To which I remind everyone, you don't have to. You don't. You don't have to. Go ahead and get all your tanks and table me then. Because I've, <laughs> I've been bringing dudes, you know, dudes with boots, as I like to call my troops, my legionaries, your legionaries, all the time. And man, they get slaughtered in mass. But now they're going to have a reason to be there. Now, I love this change because I don't like when... There's an army, let's say it's a flavor of Space Marines, that doesn't actually include any of those Space Marines. Right? I think that's cheesy beyond all recognition. AF. Like, people bring in Imperial Fists because they want a whole bunch of tanks and stuff. Hammerfall bunkers. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and, then, and then there's no regular old tactical squad. Fair. Like, I think if you've got a Space Marine army, there should be a tactical squad. Like, if, you, if you've if you got Gene Stiller cult, there better yeah. be some Gene Stillers. You know? Yeah, because there, there are scenarios, whatever. you know, where vehicles aren't going to be, you know, involved. If you're going to play Guardsmen, I need to see some Guardsmen. Yeah, like, if you're in a ship, you're not going to have a tank rolling through the hallways. <laughs> if you're playing Orcs, I need to see some boys. Exactly. I'm sorry. And of course, I'm coming from a place of privilege here because my legionaries, my battle line units are excellent. Yeah, it's cultists. Like, no, well, <laughs> not them, but they're pretty handy yeah. and I bring them every time. So, are your raptors battle line? Uh, I don't know. No, they're not. The only thing battle line is cultist mob, legionaries, and a cursed cultist, maybe? I could be wrong on that, but there's only three units that are battle line. But. They've rejigged the whole Gambit system. Now they're called Secret Mission. So by the third turn, you, if you're losing, you can select, not draw, a Secret Mission and try to complete it. And I'm not sure if your opponent even gets to know what it is because it's a Secret Mission. And yep. uh, uh, I saw Tactical Trevi on YouTube talking about how there are some of those that he thinks could be played for like every time. To which I say, remember, 
You've got to be tied or behind. And if you're behind me by turn three, it you, ain't happening. you're not scoring much. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what you intend to do in this tournament, scoring 22 by turn three, just so you can get these 20 or 40 points at the end, right? Because uh, you're about to get a W with a score of 60. <laughs> And I don't know how much that's going to help you in the in the next rounds. So Shane, would you like to bring up our Space Marine segment? Yeah, I have a confession. Um, got another confession. Yeah, what's up? Uh, yesterday, one week from now, we went long and omitted the exclusive Space Marine segment. Ah, uh, I know, I know. Well, here's I know. my Space Marine segment for today. Did you know? No. That I am Alfarius. Stay fanatical, folks. 